No one calls for the murder of gangsters in the Cape Flats or women and children in deep rural villages. Like there are calls from political parties, kill a farmer, kill a boer. What is the true extent of farm attacks in South Africa? And what risk does this pose to South Africa's farming community? I posed this question to Dr. Tio de Yaga of the Southern African Agri Initiative in a recent episode of my podcast. What follows is a short extract from a longer conversation. You can watch the full length interview that's linked in the description below. Enjoy. South African farmers are facing many, many more challenges than any other group of farmers in the world at the moment. Foremost in our minds in South Africa as family farmers is safety and security. We've had seven farm murders in August and eight in September. Um, we've had on average over the last 25 years a farm attack every second day in South Africa and a farm murder every fifth day in South Africa. Mm. Uh, stock theft, the theft of crops, of uh, diesel, of copper is rife. And we are far from the towns, we are far from the police stations. Farmers are actually pretty much delivered to their own initiatives to safeguard the environment, their neighbors, themselves, their families. Um, and, and this is really on top of the agenda at every farmer's organization, no matter at which level in South Africa. All right, so Theo, I'd like to just zoom in on this issue of farm security. Uh, what is the scale of the problem exactly? You mentioned some of the more recent, uh, very tragic deaths of farmers. And, and what is SAI doing to try to build community safe, safety initiatives amongst uh, farming uh, groups? You know, safeguarding our farms starts with the farmer. At the very center of it is a farmer himself who must make sure that he has a room where he can keep his family in his house, that he can lock out any intruders from his house, that he can defend himself, that he knows where his firearm is and that it is ready to be used at any moment. And then he must safeguard his, his yard and from there his farm and from there his neighborhood and from there the road to his farm and his district and his province. But the problem is a national problem. Our problem is an environment which is not conducive to farm safety. It is an ethos in which it became acceptable that farmers are being murdered on their farms. Now I've been confronted all over the world and more recently in New York at the United Nations, where our president said that there is no such a thing as farm murders in South Africa. I was there on that day. I heard him saying that and I responded. I had numerous interviews on USA television stations and they all say, but you have a general problem with crime in South Africa. People are being murdered in numbers every day in South Africa. 57 on average per day. What makes the farmer so special? Actually, percentage-wise, more people get killed on the Cape Flats in gang violence and also in deep rural towns in gender violence. So what makes the attacks on farms and the murders there so special? Well, inside we firmly believe that farm murders is not a mere extension of a more general problem of murders in South Africa, and that farm murders are actually special based on three observations. The first is, no one calls for the murder of gangsters in the Cape Flats or women and children in deep rural villages. Like there are calls from political parties, kill a farmer, kill a boer. When they get murdered in the Cape Flats and in the villages, it's not accompanied by hours and hours of the most brutal torture imaginable. Nobody drills holes in the kneecaps of an Omar in the Cape Flats 
like they have done on farms. And then afterwards, you do not have this applause on Twitter and other platforms on social media saying, great, we need more of these murders with no consequences for those who are applauding it at all. This makes farm murders pretty much different from any other murders in, in South Africa. And how is Sai providing that support and also the advocacy to push back against a lot of this uh, political ideology that is fueling farm murders? Most of our energy and our budget goes into this aspect because it's top of the agenda, as I said, on all levels of, of organized agriculture. We try to assist farmers to safeguard themselves, to take their safety in their own hands and to make sure that um, they are properly organized. We are partnering up with various other institutions, such as the Association for Private Security Companies, and with AFRI Forum, under the AFRI Forum umbrella, they have 168 farm watches in South Africa and two 24-hour emergency centers. We have an app where, in real time, we follow what's happening in a, a, a farm attack or a farm murder the moment that anyone in that area um, gets a notification about it. Um, and, and of course, we spend a lot of money in safeguarding communities. Only yesterday, Kubis Visa, the former Springbok lock forward, um, gave us a huge donation um, to put up cameras in a few districts in South Africa. And the, the first set of cameras will go up in the Lanesburg um, district in the Murnars Karua to make sure that the farmers know what traffic is on their roads in that area and to be able to, to monitor the area 24 hours uh, a day. Uh, we will also be paying for the first few months of the monitoring function. Uh, we go out into rural communities and to help, we help them to organize themselves in farm watches and we maintain the network between them, the local police station if it's possible, the private security environment and also a network of neighboring farm watches and the principle we are pursuing is what you can't do for yourself you cannot really bank on thanks for watching let's hand over to you our audience what do you think is the risk of farm attacks for south africa's agricultural sector leave your thoughts down in the comment section also if you enjoyed this conversation you might want to check out the full-length interview that's linked over here you can also explore my other channel for more long-form conversations. That's linked over here. My name is David Ansara. Until next time, take care.